someone that's like this will be after everyone. So I'm Christopher Beckman from Power Home Center Education Business. So um, before we start, I want to introduce the first topic. Okay, so Power Home Center, uh, we have this education business group, which mainly focuses on education solutions for schools, which we provide uh, devices and we also provide some remote escape for the schools. Uh, we have partner schools far from south up to here in the north area. Okay, so I have it here right now is with is Ms. Pao and Sir Kit. Okay, so Sir Kit is our is one of our regional regional specialists and Ms. Pao is our house executive. Okay, so before we start I want to introduce first myself. Okay, so I'm Christopher B. Denke, I'm a curriculum development specialist at Power Max Center. I'm actually I've been here for almost a year. Um, I studied BSc Physics at Philippine Normal University, and then I'm currently taking my Master of Arts in Education and Educational Technology at Dallas University. And I taught for three years in junior high and senior high school, high school on STEAM subjects, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics subjects. And I'm also a member of the Philippine Association for Physics and Science Instructors. Okay, so first, Let's know what's your background with robotics. When you hear the word robotics, what comes in your mind? Ano po ba yung alam natin sa robotics? Definitely it's robot. And when we say robot, ang mga papasok natin dito si Star Wars, si Transformers. Diba? Those are some of the movies that we see robots. But actually, what do we really mean when we say robots? Ano ba talaga yung big sabihin natin kapag sinabi natin yung robotics? Okay, so these things, uh, we will know this um, as we proceed with our discussions. Okay, actually robotics is a branch of mechatronics. Okay, so when we say mechatronics, um, it is composed of two words. Mecha, mechanisms, and then tronics from electronics. So it is a combination of electronic products which are developed, which incorporates more and more technology which makes it to be distingu distinguishable from each other. So, actually, um, mechatronics it is the application of the uh, it is the application of the electronics um, to mechanics. So, yung paano natin pinapadala yung mga malipada using electronics. Okay. So, mechatronics not only involve robotics. Um, it composed of computer engineering, control system. Mechanical engineering and electrical engineering. So it is not only reliable or relied rely on mechanism and electronics, but also with the four things that I've said earlier. Okay, so what really is robotics? So robotics is the part of mechanics that deals with the study of technology associated with design, manufacturing, application, and operation of robots. Robots is a physical mechanism or a virtual artificial, artificial agent that is automated, intelligent, and capable of executing preset programs. So, yung robots kasi, um, hindi lang siya yung robot na basta meron kang controller and then you make the robot move. But, when you say robotics, um, it, can also, it can also act on its own using the preset programs that you uploaded into your robots. Okay, so hindi lang siya Ang hindi lang siya basta basta when you have some electronics and then you make it move, hindi siya agad agad robotics. Kailangan, um, it is composed of intelligent and capable of executing uh, pre-applied or pre-uploaded programs. Yeah. So what is robots then? Okay. So it is a physical mechanism or a virtual artificial agent that is automated, intelligent, and capable of executing preset programs. Yung robot mismo, siya na yung, ito, for example, this one. Ito na mismo yung robot. Diba? This robot, para mo consider siya to be robot. First, it is a physical mechanism. Physical mechanism, may big sabihin, it can move. Okay? Or a virtual artificial agent, sometimes it can be um, AI. That is automated intelligent capable of executing present programs. So later on, as we move forward to our discussion, we will learn 
how to make this robot work or how to make this robot move using the preset programs that we have. Okay, so for this day, our robots, we will be focusing on GMO. So GMO, um, it is one of the robots produced by Ubitech. Okay, so Ubitech, um, it is a company, it is a partner of Apple that creates and manufactures robots both for educational purposes and for automation purposes. Yeah, so why do we need to do robotics? Why do we need to incorporate robotics, especially in our school? But actually, uh, when you go to the other schools far from uh, far south, um, most of the schools there they use robotics. But, uh, actually, in this area, parang konti pa lang. And if I'm not mistaken, you are the first to do this, no? So, why do we need to do robotics? Okay. So we need to do robotics because of this one. In the, in the, um, we need to do robotics not only because we wanted to gain more enrollees because of our program, but because of these things. The use of educational robotics led to the enhancement of students' mathematical performance, science performance and physics content knowledge, engineering design skills, STEM knowledge, improvement in collaboration skills, problem-solving skills, and scientific inquiry. So this, um, this enhancement on students are not invented. Hindi ko na po ay invento. They are back up with these researches. Okay? So, sabi ng mga authors na to, educational robotics can enhance the students' mathematical performance, science performance, and etc. Also, if you will look on these enhancements on students, di ba, you can see that there are certain skills that are relevant for the 21st century skills, right? When we say 21st century skills, uh, later on we will discuss, and you often heard of this 21st century skills many times. Tama po ba? Yeah. So when we do robotics, it is learning to innovate and innovating learning. When we say innovation, ano po ba yung sabihin natin with innovation? When we say innovate. So learning is related to technology. Diba? So learning to innovate, so when we learn how to innovate things, when we learn how to make um, more things out of what we have to do, diba? we innovate learning. When we say innovate learning, we are improving the quality of learning that our students receive. So we improve the quality that they need when they face, when they face um, their, the world today. Diba? Kasi kapag yung mga bata natin, when they are just stuck on the traditional way of learning, diba? hindi sila makakasabay dun sa changes na nangyari sa panahon natin. Before, when we start, diba? hindi naman natin, actually wala naman sa atin yata nakapag-robot. Kasi nung nung with some of you, Pero ako, I didn't experience robotics when I was in grade school or in high school. Diba? But now, diba, this becomes the norm. At yan yung nagiging norm. Uh, robotics ay yung nagiging, uh, kumbaga, robotics can be used to teach different subject areas. Okay, diba? Kasi um, yung robotics kasi natin today, para before, diba, kapag nagawa tayo ng performance class na ng project sa school, we have one performance task for science, we have one performance task for math, we have one for Filipino, and one for English, one for Vietnam. Today, what we have, diba, um, we, uh, we incorporate um, different subject areas into one performance class, which makes it more meaningful for students. Because they can see connection with the different subjects. Okay. Um, when I was teaching, um, what we do in our school is that before the start of the class, uh, during our pre what we do is 
we talk among each other. We talk first. Um, we vertically align, so we align first our clinical group based on subject areas. And then later on, once we are aligned with the subject areas that we have, that we are handling, we then align with the different subject areas. And then we identify what are the certain topics or what are the certain um, learning outcomes that can be used. Um, that can be incorporated in different subject areas. So sometimes when we do performance tasks, we said magkasama sa English and math, or we said magkasama si Filipino English and then si Mate. So depende. Okay. So we learn to innovate. Uh, learning to innovate means innovating early. Yeah. So when we do robotics, these are the questions that we in mind. Okay, so what will the world be like 20 or so years from now when your child has left school and is out in the world? Have you ever imagined before when you were studying that the way we teach today is different from the way we learned from the past? Am I? So that is one question that we need to answer as teachers. Diba? After 20 years, when our student left our school, ano ano ba yung mga Magiging changes sa world. Ano-ano ba yung magiging magiging pagbabago sa pamamaraan nila? Before, the use of self, the use of gadgets inside the classroom, hindi naman sila norms eh. Actually, ayaw nga natin siya before. But now, di ba, we really use them inside the class. Although not everyone uses it inside the class, but most of the schools starts to use um, gadgets to incorporate or to innovate them. Another question that we have is that what skills will your child need to be successful in this world you have imagined 20 years from now? Ano ano ba yung mga skills na need nila? 20 years from now. What were the conditions that made your high performance learning experiences so powerful? And what would learning be like if it were designed around your answers to the first three questions? Okay, so what were the conditions that made your high performance learning experiences so powerful? Ano ba yung high performance learning? Ano ba yung tinatawag natin na high performance learning experiences? Ba, ito lang ba yung nag-stay uh, ng sila sa class? Ito lang ba yung nagtuturo lang tayo? Ano po ba ito? Okay, so in order for us to answer these things, we need to understand first these four things. Okay, so knowledge, skill, thinking tools, learning research, and digital lifestyle. Okay, so the knowledge age demands a steady supply of well-trained workers. Workers using brain power and digital tools to apply well-honed knowledge skills to their daily work. Knowledge work is done collaboratively, working on the digital zoo of devices and servi services, create and innovate new products and services that solve real problems, and meet the needs of real customers is a major driving force for economic growth and work in the 21st century skills. Okay, so these four things, uh, we need to understand this in order for us to give students an experience that will help them to face the world 20 years from now, from the years after they went out of this class. In 20 years, what we see, 20 years after today, is that the things that we have doesn't exist. Diba? Hindi na nila kailangan talaga na alam nila yung Alam nila yung bagay-bagay, when I want to say bagay-bagay, yung um, knowledge skills lang. Hindi po pwede na puro knowledge lang alam nila. Kailangan they know how to think critically, they know how to work collaboratively, they learn how to um, think out of the box. Kasi kapag ang alam lang nila is their knowledge, di ba? hindi mo naman po pwede gamitin yung mga natutunan mo lang na knowledge lang. Kailangan there is an application. There is always an application in everything that you will learn. Tama po ba? Kasi if you will not, um, 
in the application of these knowledge skills cannot be enhanced or cannot be exposed on our students, or in addition to our students, natin, then this knowledge that we gain, that they gain from us, will be useless. Tama po ba? Kasi kung mara yung alam lang nila, alam lang nila mag-plus, mag-minus, pero hindi nila alam kung saan din nagamit yung pag-plus at pag-minus, then hindi siya magiging useful. Kung halimbawa ang alam nila yung inertia, alam nila yung, um, alam nila yung motion, diba? hindi mo pwedeng alam lang nila yun. Kailangan alam nila kung saan nila na-app na yun at nagagamit nila yung bagay na yun to create new things, to create innovative things. Tama ba? And that can be hold or that can be done through the help of robotics. Kasi yung robotics, uh, it is not only the study of mechanisms and electronics. Diba? More, 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 more than that, diba? mas natutunan nila or dapat mas malaman nila yung application ng natutunan nila papunta dun sa robotics. Kasi kunwari, alam mo na, alam mo yung pag-segregate ng mga gamit-gamit, di ba? Paano mo siya ma-apply using your robotics? So, kung pwede mo siya ma-apply using your robotics by making the robots identify certain things and then in, you program the robot and then make the robot move in order for them to move or to segregate things. Nakuha po ba? So, ganun na yung nangyari sa atin today. Yeah, so these four, with the help of these four, people in 21st century learning skills. Okay? So the 21st century learning skills of the students, hindi yan yung optional lang na kung pwede bang, kung pwede bang hindi ko ito gawin, kung pwede bang hindi ko ito i-enhance sa students ko, hindi siya ganun. The 21st century skills today must, is a must, is a must for us teachers to help the students. Diba? Kailangan talaga natin palabasin itong 21st century skills na po. Ano ba yung 21st century skills natin pala? We have the four C's, di ba? Do you know the four C's? What are these four C's of 21st century learning? We have collaborative, collaboration, four C's. We have two, um, 21st century skills for four C's. Collaboration, It starts with letter C. <laughs> <laughs> we have creativity, collaboration, creativity, what else? Critical thinking, and then the last one is Sipolet. <laughs> Sipolet. But we have collaboration, we have creativity, we have critical thinking, and what's the last? Collaboration. <laughs> 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 What's the last C? Cell phone. What's the last C? Communication. <laughs> Thank you, Google, for communication. So, this course is, um, yung course na to, kailangan natin siyang mayan sa students natin. We need to teach students how to think creatively, how to work with peers, how to work with their colleagues, how to work with their classmates, how to communicate. When you communicate, hindi lang yung pakikipag-usap, they must also learn how to digest things that is being told to them. Or kailangan maintindihan talaga nila yung mga, maintindihan nila yung sinasabi mo. Hindi lang basta narinig nila, hindi lang basta nakapagsalita sila. Kailangan they know how to understand, they know how to comprehend this. 
And, ano pa isa? Creativity. Diba? They know how to think out of the box. Diba? They know, they must learn how to be creative. So in order for us to hone these 21st century learning skills, we have this thing called constructionism. Have you ever heard of constructionism? What's constructionism? Yes. So what's constructionism? Actually, constructionism falls under the theory of constructivism. Okay, so what's constructionism? Actually, constructionism, it is building knowledge. Um, it believes that building knowledge occurs best when it is built through things that are tangible and shareable. So, kung baga, uh, when you say constructionism, um, students learn more when they experience things when there are more senses involved in learning. Diba? Kasi sometimes, uh, when we teach, there are, only some, um, there are only certain senses that is involved. Diba? Usually, ang involved lang is that we see and then we hear. But actually, um, learning best takes place when they have more tangible things with them. Diba? When they feel the things that they learn, kapag, um, kapag nakahawakan nila, um, kapag although yung naaamoy minsan depende naman yun eh, depende sa subject but, or basta, constructionism it occurs best when there are more skills or there are um, when, the, when the things that they have is tangible and when the things that they learn is actually in here wag kung baga nakahawa ka talaga nila na experience nila sabi na sa mga ideal school of experience nila uh, the more senses that is involved in learning, diba? the retention of students is increased. Diba? So that's according to Edward Day. Okay? Yeah. Construction is, uh, construction is in, gives children the freedom to explore natural interest using new technologies with the support of a community of learners that can facilitate deeper understanding. So, ano yung sinasabi na rito na when they are given the freedom to explore? Diba? For example, in robotics. Diba? So, robotics natin, um, actually, diba? they are given the freedom to explore. Diba? Kasi using these robots, what we can do is we just have the app and then we let, we let them build robots on their own. Diba? And this freedom to explore works better when there are support of community of learners that can facilitate deeper understanding. And who is this community of learners? Sino ba to? Sino ba to learners na to that can facilitate deeper understanding? Aside from their classmates, tayo to teachers. Diba? Um, right now, hindi na tayo kasi yung teachers kasi hindi na tayo yung Hindi na, hindi pala na sa atin yung mga polyo ng kaalaman nila. Pala na sa atin yung, hindi na tayo yung sentro na, na ano, hindi na tayo yung sentro ng knowledge ng students. Diba? Actually, we work more as facilitators. Diba? We teach them how to think. We help them to think critically. Diba? Kapag pa tayo, diba, teachers dati, kapag nag-aaral tayo, especially dun sa mga older ones. Diba? Nung nag-aaral tayo, ang way na pag-aaral pag natin is nakaupo tayo sa desk, si teacher na susunod sa blackboard, nagsasalita si teacher, tayo naman po, yan. Ngayon ba ganun pa din? <laughs> Hindi na. Ngayon kasi, kapag nakakuro tayo, diba, what we do is we ask them more frequently. Tama ba? Kaya tanong natin sila, hindi ka na yung basta, hindi, hindi mo na sabi na, kumari, uh, ano, 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 ano ang mga, ano, ano ang mga, ano ang mga, ang hayop na makikita sa bahay, kumari, di ba? Dali, sabi na teacher, ang mga hayop na makikita sa bahay ay ito, 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 ito. Ngayon, hindi na. 
Kaya tanungan natin yung students natin, kung ano ba yung nakikita nila, ano yung na-experience nila. And then from that, diba, gagawin natin mga teachers, katahingin natin isa-isa, yung mga knowledge na yun, yung mga sinabi nila, in order for us to relate the main concept that we are teaching them. Diba, kung baga lahat na ng sagot, galing sa kanila, tinutulungan lang natin silang mag-isip. And we don't give them really answers. What we give them is help for them to look for answers. Tama ba, teachers? Yan. So, with our robotics program, ganun din tayo. Hindi natin ituturo sa kanila na, okay, sige, ikawit mo ito sa ganyan. Ikawit mo ito sa ganito. Diba? O dahil, <laughs> dahil kayo gumagana, ito yung gawin mo. Hindi na ganun. Ang gagawin na natin, teachers, bakit hindi siya gumana? Saan ka kaya nagkamali? From that, ano yung pwede natin gawin para mas maging mapagana siya ng maayos? Diba? Ganun na yung takbo natin ngayon. Hindi na siya yung, okay, sige, ito yung gawin mo, gawin mo, gawin mo, gawin mo. Hindi na siya isa-isa na i-reiterate mo sa students. Instead, what is on? Instead, what you do is help them think on their own. Bayaan mo silang mag-isip. Tulungan mo silang mag-isip. Diba? Hindi mo sa kanilang ituturuin lahat. Bayaan mo sila. Let them learn on their own. Give them the freedom to explore. And be one of the community of learners that help them facilitate deeper understanding of the content. Nakukuha po ba? I think po, sige, um, you can, we can have working, working lunch. So, you can eat when I talk. So, okay na tayo. Yan. Sige po, kuha po muna kayo. Tapos, pagka after niyo pong kumuha, isa ka tayo. Proceed. Sige. Question na. Kasi diba, isa sa mga naging uh, issue ngayon about technology. Kasi yung pagdating sa health ng kumpana. That's why may mga presensya na ayaw din na masyadong i-expose yung mga anila, anila sa gadgets. Kasi nga mayroong radiation, or sometimes mayroong psychological effects sa kanila. Ano um, yun na uh, sometimes may mga advantage din yung traditional way of learning kasi sa um, ganitong pace niya ng about the technology. So how do you handle that? One question. How do you use technology? Pa, paano mo ba ginagamit yung gadgets na yun? Okay, yun yung ano yun. Uh, yun yung pa pwede natin talong mo. Pa, paano ba natin yung ginagamit? Yung ginagamit. Um, for example, uh, we are using it inside the classroom. Actually, maraming parent are very resilient when, we, when they say na, oh, we want, the, uh, we want the students to use iPad inside the classroom. Pero ang magiging tanong natin dyan, is paano ba natin siya gagamitin? Nagkakaroon tayo ng problema when we do not know how to use these gadgets to incorporate learning. Kasi, uh, we have this thing called blended learning. I know you've heard of that. Blended learning. Diba? When we say blended learning, hindi lang ito ibig sabihin na I have my I have my gadget inside the classroom and then I use it as um, I use it as a reading device. It is not like that. Um, when we say blended learning, um, there is oh, there is a limitation. There is a big limitation when and how to use certain gadgets. When it comes naman, sabihin natin sa bahay, hindi yung nagiging problema ng parents na, um, na lagi lang nakatuto. Um, I think that falls under how the parents allow the child to use a certain gadget. Um, one example, um, I have a niece in our house, or she lives, she lives with us. She has her own iPad. Um, she can connect to the internet. But, there is only limited time wherein she can use a certain gadget. And there are only certain applications that she is allowed to use. Diba? 
yun, dun tayo papasok, eh. dun tayo papasok on how we discipline students on the use of gadgets. And before, um, nung, nung mga bago-bago pa siya, nung mga baby pa siya, di ba, um, una mahirap kasi syempre, ang gusto niya, dun lang. Di ba? Pero, um, we train her, we train her na you only have certain time or so, um, certain time of the day when you can use your gadget. And when you use your gadget, hindi ka mo pwede mag-use ng gadget mo without our supervision. So, she uses her gadget with us. So, for example, nag, ano siya, um, she's watching YouTube. So, kapag nag-YouTube siya, kasama namin siya. Hindi siya po pwede mag-YouTube na kukunin yung iPad niya, kukunin siya sa kwarto, then doon siya mag-isa mag-doon. Hindi po pwede mo. At meron lang siyang oras. For example, O pwede ka lang gumamit ng tablet, kapag matapos mo na yung assignment mo, tapos nakapagbasa ka na. So, yun lang. Doon ka lang po pwede gumamit ng gadgets. And then, you only have one hour. After that hour, hindi na po pwede. And then, eventually, alam na niya. Alam na niya yung oras niya. So, ang ginagawa niya, nagiging routine na niya everyday. Papasok siya ng school, magla-dunch, and then, chesta siya. After chesta, Gawa siya ng assignments. Kapag tapos ay gumawa ng assignments sa school, mag-ano siya, mag-reading na sila ng mama ko. Mga mama ko. So, reading sila. And then after nun, um, bibigyan sa kanya yung, uh, bibigyan sa kanya yung iPad. And then, after some few times, parang ano, um, magkukulat ka na lang sa kanya, bibigyan na sa iyo yung tablet, sabi niya, I'm done, sabi niya, I'm done. Kasi alam na niya na, sobrang siya sa oras. So, nakikita niya yun. Uh, kasi minsan, kasabi na doon siya, Diba? So, alam niya yung oras ng TV. So, kapag ito na yung palabas, ah, okay, so stop na ako, tapos na. Doon natin po pwede, doon natin, hindi niyo po pwede natin mag-argument with that. Kasi, paano ba natin ginagamit? Or paano ba natin pinapayagin na nagamitin niyo? Um, another thing, sa school, um, this one school is using iPad. Pero they are not using iPad just for reading purposes. Kasi yun yung nagiging mali ng ibang, ng ibang, Suppose, hindi mo siya nagiging mali, pero um, nagiging hindrance, dun, nagiging, fail, nagiging cost ng pag-fail ng ethnic program ng isang school is that they only use their tablets for reading, which is not, hindi dapat, hindi mo dapat gamitin yung iPad just for the sake of reading. Yung iPad na yan, um, it, um, it is a very powerful tool for learning. Um, we have this one school. These are grade 5 students. Imagine, these are grade 5 students. And then, uh, what we do inside the classroom is the teachers um, give them certain tasks that uses iPad. For example, um, we ask the students to create um, a video. Could you imagine these students were able to create their video in a period of an hour. One hour lang. They were able to create their own video. Um, they created their own video by groups. So, by groups naman sila. And then, kung makikita mo, um, as they create their video, hindi lang sila, ano, hindi lang sila nakikreate. Parang, they think, they really think. Diba? Pinag-iisipan talaga nila. Kasi makikita mo doon nung habang ginagawa nila yun, makikita mo na nagtatalo-talo sila para nila mas magpaganda. Dapat ito yung gawin natin. Dapat ito yung gawin natin. Diba? Tapos makikita mo doon na, ay, mas maganda kapag ito yung ito yung nilagay natin dyan. Or ito yung mas okay dyan. Tapos yung iba naman mag-agree. Diba? That's one way of using technology inside the classroom. Diba? We help them to think. Diba? On that, on that certain activity, diba? we help them to think uh, critically, di ba? Iniisip nila, ay, paano ko ba, paano ba namin ito magandang gawin? And not only that, we also help them to collaborate with their colleagues, with their classmates. Uy, ito, mas maganda to, mas maganda tong ganyan. And likewise, they also learn how to communicate well. Di ba kasi, um, along the way, they, um, they learn that when they talk, hindi lang yung kung ano yung maisip nila, yun yung sasabihin nila. Pinag-iisip pa na nila kung paano nila i-deliver yung mga ideas nila. Diba? Um, I hope you uh, uh, answered your question. I just asked kasi yung uh, reality na yes, mm -hmm. 
I think the parents must have their own seminar. Yes. Because not all parents are mature enough. Yes. Oh, ang iba kasi um sometimes kasi um we cannot um we cannot date the parents in naman kasi with their business kids. Yeah. Sometimes um ang uh, um, kaibigan na lang ng bata ay iPad. Diba? Pero um it should be that way. Um kahit pa paano dapat yung pag-use nila ng guide. Kasi when we guide them, kapag guide yung paggamit nila, they will learn how to value the importance of that device. They will learn how to use that device wisely and they learn how to how to discipline themselves then as well. Diba? So yun lang din. Kailangan lang din gabayan. Actually, when we use technology inside the classroom, hindi lang yun nakarelay kay teacher. Hindi lang si teacher yung kailangan na mag-embrace dun sa paggamit ng mundo. Dapat yung parents din. Alam din, dapat yun yung busy ng parents. The parents also know how how to help or how to incorporate these devices with their child. Kung paano nila gagamit ito sa bahay. Ganun lang din naman siya. Although I'm not yet a parent, pero um, as my, my observation with my niece is like that. Diba? So, na tayo. Um, kung baga nga, diba, um, um, di ba sabi nga, um, it takes a village to educate a child. Hindi lang siya nakarelize sa teachers. Kailangan na just yung parents, and then this community to help. Um, to help students learn more. And I think that's one good thing with your school, no? Kasi hindi lang siya initiative ng teachers, initiative din siya ng parents. And the parents help the students, um, help in order for us to provide students with the things that they need in order for them to face 21st century in the end. Later on, um, we will discuss what are the help of the parents, ang yung natutulong ng parents, natutulong ng community, in order for us to achieve this 21st century learning skills through the use of robotics. Okay? So, let's continue. Yeah. Robotics is developmentally appropriate for children. Why? Because it supports children in their explorations, scaffold their learning, and provide interesting materials to manipulate and share with others. So, later on, it's a my app na gagamitin natin, the Gmo app. Meron doon parang community. Yung community na yun, you will be able to share kung ano ba yung nagawa mo. O pwede ka rin makita, hindi mo rin makita kung ano yung gawa ng iba. Okay, so there is a community of creators. There is a there is community of inventors. Yeah, which is nice. Yeah. Okay. So, I have your simplified step, um, steps involving the engineering design process as appearing in the Massachusetts engineering design frameworks. Okay, so, ito na po. Um, when we teach robotics, these are the steps that we need to um, do them with our students. One is to identify problem and constraints. When you give them a problem, you give them the you give them the problem in order for them to solve. Kasi di ba, ang pangit naman, kung mari, gagawa sila ng robot, okay, gawin mo itong robot na to. Ang thinking mo, bakit ito kailangan gawin? So, para magkaroon sila ng sagot dun sa may tanong na yun, na bakit ito kailangan gawin, you give them a problem. Di ba? You give them the constraints. You give them the limitations. Di ba? And then, after that, Brainstorm solutions. Kasi brainstorm solutions, you look for possible solutions. Isipin mo kung ano-ano ba yung pwede kong maging sagot dun sa tanong na binigay ko. After which, you construct prototype. You imagine. Imagine mo, how can I do this? What are the materials that I need to do this? And then next, once you have your prototype, test and evaluate. Gumagana ba? Perfect na ba siya? Is there something that I can improve? Yun, yun yung mga kung pwede natin i-test and evaluate yun sa may work nila. And then after, after we identify what are the things that needs to be improved, what are the things that went wrong, we redesign. Well, when we say redesign, we change. Diba? 
baguhin natin. Tanggalin yung mali, palitan ng mas tama. Tama ba? So, yung mga pali, isa na side, we replace them with new, better things. Although sometimes, yung pinalitan natin tama rin naman, pero we can make, um, we can make something better out of it. And then, after that, we communicate solution. We tell them, ah, I have, um, let them present, let them present, let them present their findings, let them present their design, let them present how they did, how they answered the question, something like that. And then after which, once they have invented something, you go back again. Identify what are your problems and constraints. Isipin mo ulit, ano pa yung pwede kong ma-improve for this one? Ano kaya pwede kong idagdag? And then, it's a cycle. Diba? Um, inventing or um, designing is a cycle. Engineering design is a cycle. Hindi siya pwede ma-stop lang. Or just, um, hindi siya pwede ma-stop lang dito. Kailangan mag-move ka dun sa next. And then, once you're done, hindi ka naman kung pwede maging settled na forever eh. Diba? Kailangan maghahanap ka pa rin ng bago. So, you identify new problems and constraints. Okay? Yeah. So, have you seen this? The zone of proximal development. Na-entotter nyo na po ba ito? Yeah. Zone of proximal development. Okay. So, yung child kasi, di ba, um, is development, um, it is divided into three parts. So, one, so what a child can do without help? Ano yung ibig sabihin nun? Di po pwede mo na siyang pabayaan. And then, you have here, on the outer shell, is what a child is developmentally not ready to do. Ano pa yung hindi niya kayang gawin? And then, you have here, the zone of proximal development. Um, this part is what a child can do with help. With supervision. With supervision of, with supervision of a more mature individual which can help him or her learn its maximum potential. So, yung goal itong zone of proximal development is we push a child to do um, to help him or her be ready with the things that he or she is not yet ready to do. So, improving the zone of proximal development, diba? Nadagdagan yung, nadagdagan itong what he or she can do without help. And then, we help them push or uh, we help them to think more in order for them to go to these things that they are not ready to do. Diba? Kunti yung te, as your lessons go by, diba? Ang nangyayari kasi, nadagdagan na nadagdagan yung alam niya. So, dapat pinupush natin sila dun sa may bagay na matutulungan natin sila and once they become ready, diba, they will be able to do it on their own. Nakuha ko ba? Yeah. So, this is described as a difference between what a learner can do independently and what can be accomplished with the help of a more knowledgeable other. Sino yung more knowledgeable other? Tayo yun, teachers. Diba? So, at yun, so zone of proximal development, yun yung meron tayong teacher support. And when we give um, sufficient teacher support or when we give support to our students more frequently, diba, they will be able to cover up those things that they are not yet ready to do and they become capable of doing it without our supervision anymore. Diba? So, ipupush ka natin sila ng push. Yeah. So, to do this, we have three things. So, we have first is the intersubjectivity. Ano itong intersubjectivity? It is the process whereby two participants who begin a task with different understanding arrive at a shared understanding. So for example, di ba? Dito na po pasok yung, ano, yung communication and collaboration ng students natin, di ba? Uh, o pwede iba yung alam mo sa alam ng isa, di ba? Pero kapag pinag-usapan din yung alam mo at yung alam niya, at kapag nag-usap kayo, nag-collaborate kayo with each other, but there can be a shared understanding. When you have a shared understanding, then there you see better understanding of both of you. Next one is scaffolding. 
adjusting the support offer, offered during a teaching session to fit the child's current level of performance. Yan. So, kung pwede nga, sabi natin kanina, iba yung alam niya sa alam niya. And kung pwede naging magkaiba yun, is that because they have different understanding. And their understanding can be improved with the help of teachers, supplement or scaffolding, making a framework, making a framework on the student's mind on a certain topic, or on, on or a certain lesson. Tama ko ba? And then last one is guided participation. So guided participation naman, so once they are, it's like scaffolding then. Pero, when we say guided participation, um, ito na yung mas marami ng involved. Mas marami ng involved. So involved na yung alam niya, yung alam ng isang student. Kumbaga, lahat na kayo nag-uusap. Okay? So in order for you to create that, um, to lessen that zone of proximal development, para mas maraming mo yung, mas alam nila. Yan. So the focus moved simply from gathering information to a more complex process of researching and thinking critically about the new information in order to use it in a meaningful, meaningful ways to prepare students for the challenges of the 21st century. So, this knowledge development and knowledge construction, ito na yung, um, you will help them. In the process that we had earlier, we help the students in order for them to develop their skills and be prepared for the 21st century. Yeah. So, using educational robotics as mind tools in the classroom, we apply constructivism. Yan na yun. So, ano ba itong mind tools? So, the sense of cognitive tools represent the constructionism dimension of constructivism. Yung mind tools, ito yung mga ginagamit natin. Okay? Yeah. So, this one, um, this is a project learning bicycle. Um, so, the project learning bicycle, it's like a mind. Kaya nga siya bicycle. So, we have the student wheel and the teacher wheel. So, yung student wheel, Ito yung mga gawain na students. Diba in order for the bike to move, kailangan may gulong. Kasi kapag walang gulong yung bike, kaandar pa siya? Hindi. So, kailangan, para umandar yung bike, kailangan meron ka ang student, at the same time, meron ka din teacher. Okay. So, this one, sa bike, diba, para makasakay ka, kailangan meron ka ng chair. So, dun sa may bike, sa may learning bicycle natin, we have student seats and teacher seat. And all of them together are co-managing the driving of the skill. Tama? We put the drive. That's it lang. Sila yung nagpapatagpo dun sa may bike. And kailangan mo naman yung bela in order for you to navigate. Tama? So, yung, yung sa bike, di ba? Yung mga bela ng bike is nakakonect dito kay teacher B. Bela naman sa bike, di ba? Wala namang bike na Yung manibela nakalagay sa likod. Lagi na sa harapan niya. So that is the teacher's wheel. Di ba kapag pin-learn mo yung bike, ang mangyayari, yung wheel mo sa harapan, mag-turn din. Tama? And then kapag pin-learn mo sa left, mag-turn din sa left yung bike mo. Ganun din yung sa, ganun din yung work ni teacher. Di ba? You have a teacher wheel. So si teacher wheel, hindi yung nag-move. And then, the same time, si wheel din, Siya din yung nagiging guide ni teacher na po pwede niyang gawin to drive the students in the right path. Tama? So ano ba yung magiging guide ni teacher? So what's the problem, the learning here and tools, question, evaluation, assessment, placement, and time management? So yun yung mga kailangan mo in order for the, uh, in order for the teacher to drive the students towards a certain skill. Tama ba? Ayan. So with the project's wheels in place, we need a frame to hold the wheels together and to support the coordinated work of the projected team. And to complete our two-wheel learning vehicle, we need the other essential components in order for us, the students and teachers, to coordinate. Okay? So when they are coordinated, Di ba kapag ganyan bawa, eto, kung makikita natin, di ba sa bicycle natin, we have one pedal for the teacher, and then pedal for the students. 
Ano mangyayari kapag hindi coordinated yung pag-pedal nila? Kunwari, ito ang pedal niya pabaliktad. Isang paharap. Ano mangyayari? Hindi sila andal, di ba? So, kailangan, there must be a coordinated work with the student and with the teacher. Kasi without this coordinated work with the student and the teacher, then, you will not move. Hindi ka makakapag-move forward. Even though you are equipped, even though you have all the necessary materials, you will not move if the teacher and the student is not coordinated. Diba? If they do not work closely, if the teacher do not work closely with the students. Yeah. So, using the driving questions and problems, this becomes the steering guide for the teacher to lead the students into the right path. Tama? Yeah. Saan ba yung destination nila? Their destination is always towards the development of the 21st century skills. Diba? In order for them to go or to achieve 21st century skills, there must be a coordination of the teacher and the student working, for, working together in order, for them, in order for them to achieve these 21st century skills. Remember, hindi lang to gawa yung teacher. Hindi lang si teacher ang ah, kailangan para ma-push si students. Kailangan si students din. They are also working on their own. They are also working closely with, closely with each other in order for them to achieve that 21st century skills. And while on your way, while, while you're on your way to the desti your destination or while you're on, the, on your way to the 21st century skills, there is a degree of challenge. Diba? Hindi naman lahat ng daan para makuha mo o magiging may sa student mo ay patag. Diba? There are challenges. Actually, the, uh, the challenges hindi lang naman yung pa-inclined. Eh. Diba? It's like a roller coaster ride. Diba? It, minsan, madali, minsan mahirap in order for you to achieve that skills. Pero we just represented it like this. Yeah. So, we have balance point to the left, which is the guided instruction. And then balance point right, which is collaborative construction. So eventually, di ba, before, we start with guided instruction. Tayo muna nagbibigay sa kanila. Okay, you do this, you do that. Especially diba, sa mga younger kids. Di ba, usually tayo-tayo lang yun. Guide natin sila. Pakote-konte, pa isa-isa. And then eventually, they collaborate, they collaborate with their classmates. They start to learn how to work with others. Nagkakaroon sila ng grouping. Nag-uusap na sila. So, habang tumataas yung challenge na yun, di ba, you have your tailwind and your headwind. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng tailwind? Tailwind, siya yung nagpo-push. Yung headwind, siya yung nagpo-push din from dun sa may harapan. Di ba? Kung makita natin dito, sa may tailwind natin, in order for us to reach this 21st century, diba? hindi lang si teacher, hindi lang si students, hindi lang yung instruction. Meron ka rin dapat tailwind. Ano yung magiging tailwind mo? Your support from the school and the community. Which is very evident in your school. Kasi there is a support, di ba? Andiyan yung complete support system. The administrators are very, um, very eager to do this program. The parents as well, they also help, um, they help the school raise funds for this program. So, with this support, diba, with this support, with the teachers guiding the students, with the students working collaboratively with each other, we are aiming to achieve this 21st century skills. Nakukuha ko ba? And once we attain, or once we help them drive, Along the way to 21st century skills, diba? we help them to be prepared with the world they will face 20 years from now. We help them face the challenges of tomorrow. We help them face um, challenges that may come along the way. Kasi eventually, um, eventually naman papabayaan nyo sila eh. Diba? Actually, most of the students, hindi naman talaga nila maaalala 
kung ano yung person na pinanggit mo sa kanila, kung ano yung mga tinuro mo sa kanila, but they will remember you, how you guided them, or how you treated them. And with your guided instruction, and with your, uh, with your guidance as teachers, you help these students to, you help these students to develop their selves, to develop what they can do, and what they can push pa para sa sarili nila. Do you have any questions for Questions po? Yeah, so last of all. So collaborative knowledge construction scheme. So first, sharing, adding, negotiating meaning. We elaborate this meaning. We evaluate the proposed synthesis and we apply the constructed knowledge. So we have to bear this in mind that in order for us to fully implement or to be fully successful with our robotics program, um, it is not only the students that will work, it is not only the teachers, it is not only the parents, not only the administrator, but it is a, but it is a whole community work um, in order for us to achieve our goals and our ideals for this group. So that's it for the framework. We will now proceed with the machine. I think we can have a minute's break. Break from that. See you.